Right now is the first lawmaker to go on the record right here in on this program back in February of 2020 and suggest that COVID-19 could have leaked from that Wuhan lab of virology. Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, you've done great value for our viewers by your honesty and telling it like it is. Thank you for that. Do you still stand by what you said and what have you learned in the last year about this situation? Yeah, Maria, it's hard to believe it's been 15 months since you and I first discussed what I think most Arkansans think is a very common sense proposition that it surely is a big coincidence that this virus started not up in some remote mountain village with caves full of bats, but rather in downtown Wuhan, a city larger than New York, just a few blocks up the road from labs that was researching bat-based coronaviruses. And since then, every bit of circumstantial evidence, to include evidence that came out in the final days of the Trump administration that some employees and staff at these labs may have had uh, coronavirus-like symptoms as early as October or September of 2019, continues to point to these labs as the origin of this virus, not that food market that the Chinese Communist Party used as a cover story from the very beginning. That's why it's so imperative that the Biden administration hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable and demand answers for all of these questions. But he's not, Senator. You know that. We're talking about all of the things that's coming out of the Biden administration. You're going to be debating another bill this week on uh, not having people invest in Chinese companies that are tied to the military. And yet the administration just removed one technology company from the Trump blacklist and it pushed out, postponed the uh, the uh, ban on trading stocks of companies that are tied to the Chinese military. What's going on? The Biden administration keeps giving the Chinese Communist Party a break and rolling over for the CCP. We have a timeline of events here on the history of the game of function research. And what we have on our timeline is that there was a pause in this research, and then the pause was lifted in 2017. Let's take a look at this research and funding uh, of gain of function, uh, which you raise in a letter that you sent to Director Francis Collins of the uh, NIH. Tell me what you want answered. You've got 17 questions here. You and six other senators signed this letter to Francis Collins. Well, Maria, Joe Biden's been rolling over uh, for aggressors around the world, not just China, but Russia and Iran. And this week, uh, he seemed to draw a moral equivalence between Israel and Hamas when he began to demand a ceasefire. But the letter that I joined Senator Ron Johnson and a handful of other senators on very specifically asks the National Institutes of Health why they were fund funding gain-of-function research in these Wuhan labs. Now, Dr. Fauci has been to Congress, and he said this absolutely did not happen. But Dr. Fauci is playing word games. So the money that the NIH gave went to an American organization, which turned around and gave hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to these Wuhan labs to investigate coronaviruses and, yes, to find ways to make them more contagious and more dangerous. And uh, we asked Francis Collins, who was Dr. Fauci's boss, to come clean, to tell us exactly what was happening, why this research was being funded, as you point out, Maria, during a time in which the Obama administration had explicitly banned this kind of gain-of-function research, research into making some of the world's deadliest pathogens even more dangerous. And, and I, I think that there could be an example here of these public health bureaucrats thinking they know better, that they're not going to answer to political oversight and accountability, even in the uh, Obama administration, and they went ahead with this research that could be very dangerous. That's why it is imperative that the yeah. NIH come clean and tell us exactly what happened. You talk about those word games that uh, Fauci was playing. In fact, we know that a gentleman named Peter Dasik was running or runs the uh, Health Eco Alliance, the uh, alliance that uh, the nonprofit that took money from the NIH and sent it over to Wuhan. Here's Peter Dasik, who runs that alliance, talking about coronavirus. Listen to this. You're saying these are diverse uh, coronaviruses and you can't vaccinate against them. There are no antivirals. What, what yeah. do we, what do we do? Well, so I, I think that coronavirus is a pretty good. I mean, neurovirologists, you know all this stuff, but they, you can um, manipulate them in the lab pretty easily. You, you can manipulate the coronavirus easily, he's telling us, in December of 2019. And by the way, after I spoke with you and others who suggested it likely came from the lab, I sent out a tweet 
talking about the pro our show for, and the things that I found out. And Peter Daszak trashes me on Twitter saying I know nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, here we are a year later. Uh, obviously, it's likely that it came from the lab. What do you make of, of, of what took place here? Well, I think a lot of these so-called experts and scientific bureaucrats are trying to cover their tracks. Again, this could be a genuine scandal. This could be public health bureaucrats violating explicit direction from the Obama White House to continue research that is highly, highly dangerous and potentially susceptible to escape from a laboratory, especially a laboratory in China that has notoriously um, uh, bad safety practices. But of course, a year ago, Maria, Donald Trump was still in the White House and the press didn't want to say anything that would maybe help him get reelected or to confirm what people like I was saying, if they, since they don't like my politics. I guess now that Joe Biden's in, uh, in the White House, they're willing to uh, investigate a little bit deeper. It's just an example, once again, of how the press has become deeply partisan in our day. Senator, real quick before we go, we only have a couple of seconds here, but in terms of the domestic policy, uh, President Biden is talking about more requirements for the financial services sector, which initially giving $80 billion to the IRS is his idea, which would help the banks give the Treasury direct access into our bank accounts. What's going on here? Does he want surveillance of our bank accounts now? Yeah, he, he wants to give tens of billions of dollars to the IRS, uh, the organization where Lois Lerner uh, use the bureaucracy to persecute Christian groups and conservative groups so they can track the money that you have in your checking account or your savings account or your 401k. Uh, suffice to say, I don't think many Republicans are going to support that in the Congress. Unbelievable. Senator, we'll keep talking with you. Got to catch up with you on finding out where all of this legislation is going. Thanks very much for being here this morning, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You, Senator Tom Cotton.